And because this is essentially uncharted territory, it's raising a lot of questions about what this means for the future of robots in policing and the use of force, especially deadly force. I'm Arena? so fascinated, Chris, by this because, you, like you said, it says so much about the future of policing. But was this robot designed for this particular purpose? No, this is a bomb disposal robot. It's the same type of robot that you, you've seen that gets wheeled out when there's a suspicious package or, uh, you know, if there's a, a device that they need to, to, to detonate, it, it's not safe to do it uh, with a person. It's a remote controlled device. It is not autonomous. Uh, it was not designed to, uh, to be a weapon. It was not, uh, you know, weaponized. This was a jerry rigged decision made when they essentially ran out of options. Think of it as this was kind of the worst case scenarios, worst case scenario where they didn't feel they had any other way to get at this suspect uh, that wouldn't put officers' lives at risk. And keep in mind, his whole mission was to shoot police. So if you had to go in and get him, uh, you're giving him the target he wants. Whereas a robot, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a person. It's, it's, you can wheel it in there without risking a, a single life. Right. And how did officers control it, Chris? It's remote controlled. Uh-huh. And so they just go in and use the remote control and can manage to control it that way. Right. It's a hardwired remote control device. You don't want to have wireless or extra RF frequencies around an explosive device. And it's, remember, it's designed to go into and, and address an explosive device. So it is a hardwired remote control device uh, that's driven by a person uh, you know, from, a, from a distance away. It, it has cameras so they can see what's in front of them and, and whatnot. Do you think, I know there's a lot of controversy on both sides of using this, but ultimately police believe it did save lives by going in and, like you said, this was a last resort option, but do you see more cities possibly using this in the future? Well, I mean, cities, uh, the, these, these bomb disposal robots are widely used. I mean, the, the NYPD has them. Most major police departments have them. So uh, it's not so much a question of will you see bomb disposal robots being used by departments. They're already being used. Uh, there is some debate sort of in, in the big picture thinkers about whether or not this sets a precedent where you need to start thinking about lethal force in, in terms of, of robots uh, in policing, similar to how the discussion you have uh, with, say, drone strikes, or if this is, you know, a, a sort of a one-off. You know, there, if you think back to 1985, the Philadelphia police dropped explosives out of a helicopter to try to end a siege in a Philadelphia neighborhood. That sparked a fire of 50 or 60 homes, and mm -hmm. police really haven't tried that again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a precedent setter. It didn't necessarily mean there was a follow-up. So, uh, on one hand, you have people that say, you know, this was a, a jerry-rigged emergency situation, uh, and then you have folks on the uh, the other side of this thought process, which says, you know, what this will do is. Uh, this, this could then just speed up the acceptance of technology of, of robots uh, into policing. And then the big picture questions need to be addressed. What does that mean for use of force? What does it mean if you want to use a robot on patrol? Uh, when is it appropriate to use force and what kind of force? Uh, you know, w would it make sense to use a robot with a mentally unstable uh, suspect? Because then there's no officer risk. So maybe there's some, some safety benefits to using it. Those are questions uh, that would have to be tackled. And, and you know, one concern is that uh, these things sort of get uh, adopted, uh, you know, in one place and then a different city will have different rules and you don't really have a national standard. So yep. uh, there are some people that are saying that the time to have the conversation is now before it's really reality. Future of Policing, Chris Van Cleve in Washington. Thank you, Chris. Sure thing.